Welcome to another video of HR Analytics course. This is our lecture number three. In the lecture one, we discussed about the basics of uh, HR Analytics. And in the lecture two, we discussed about the main process of HR Analytics. In this lecture, we will be talking about the functions of human resource management. We will try and understand the different functions of HR. And then we will also talk about human resource planning. This is going to be our main topic for today, in which we will also analyze some data related to the HR planning. So let's just start. Now, first we'll try and understand the different functions of uh, HRM process. So this basic diagram explains almost all the functions related to HR that we'll be using in our uh, upcoming lectures. We usually start with the human resource planning. This is our first function. Then based on our human resource planning, we decide about the recruitment and decruitment. And then we go to the selection. Then there's another function of orientation, training, performance management, compensation and benefit, and career development. So let's just first talk about these functions and try and understand the concepts so when we are applying these concepts in our HR analytics, we have a very good idea what to do and how to perform those functions. First, we will understand what is human resource planning. Now, in order to understand human resource planning, we first need to see how do we plan and what do we plan for. So we always plan for future. So let's suppose you are in 2022 and you're planning for 2025. You can also say, that you're planning for 2023. So whatever is the case, what you'll do in HRP? You will be calculating the supply of your employees, the demand of your employees, and based on which you will be knowing the gap, which will give you some kind of results based on which you will be making some kind of decision or the next action that you have to take. So what is the supply? Supply in simple terms, can be considered as the number of employees that you currently have with you in 2022. It is much complicated thing, but for the sake of understanding, you can say the you have 100 employees right now. And we are also supposing that they are going to continue with you till 2025. So what is the demand? Demand is the number of people or number of employees that you will be needing in 2025. This year, you will be needing these many people. You might be closing down a few businesses for which you do not need 100 people, but now you need 80 people. Gap is the actually the difference between the supply and demand. Why there's a plus sign, we'll talk about it. So let's look at this situation one. We have 100 employees. And we will be needing 80 employees in the end, in 2025. What, what is the gap? Gap is plus 20. Why are we saying plus? Because we need less people in 2025. So we are expecting that there is going to be a surplus of employees in the coming time, which is your 2025. So because it's a surplus, that is why we are giving this positive sign. So this is one situation where we are planning and we are expecting that we will have surplus of people. In the second situation, we have how much is the supply? 100 people. We have 100 people, but we will be needing 120 people. Why? Maybe because we might be starting new projects during this time. So the second situation is the shortage of people, which means you have 100 people and you will be needing 120 people. So 20 people extra will be required, which means you will be having shortage of these employees. The third situation is relatively simple that you have 100 employees. This is your supply and you will be needing 100 employees. It is not likely possible, but if this is the situation, then you have the equilibrium position. So what to do now? If you have the equilibrium position, then you don't need to do anything because you are fine with the number of people and the kind of people that you want. 
and the kind of and the number of people that you have. In the second situation, you have the shortage of employees. So when you have the shortage of employees, you will move towards recruitment. We'll talk about what is recruitment. And if you have this situation, which is the surplus, you will go towards decruitment. Now, decruitment means getting rid of these people, somehow regaining your balance. If you need 80 people, you must have 80 people. So, if we look at this diagram, you will clearly see that after the human resource planning, if there is a surplus, which means a plus sign, you will go towards decruitment, which means uh, maybe retiring those people, maybe not renewing their contracts, maybe doing anything to make the balance, which means that the number of people that you want and the number of people that you have are equal. But if you have shortage, which means you will be needing new employees, then you move towards recruitment. Mostly when HRP is done, this is the case that you usually follow. You need to go towards recruitment because there are some retirements, there are some people leaving the organizations and a successful business is always growing. So that means they need more people. So you move towards recruitment. So let's just try and understand these function first and then we'll come back and we will see how to perform this human source planning in our Excel file. So what is recruitment? Recruitment is actually creation of pool of potentially capable candidates. So let's suppose you have 20 uh, jobs which are vacant. You give an ad of these jobs and people started applying. So let's say at the end of the deadline, 200 people applied for the jobs is your pool. So now you have 200 CVs. So that is the recruitment function. Here your recruitment function is finished. Then there's going to be another function known as selection. So what do you do in selection? In selection, actually you're shortlisting and screening down the applications to select the best candidates. So what do you do in it? You use different predictors, which are going to predict that what kind of candidate is going to be a good employee for you. So let's suppose you have 200 applications and you start looking at their CVs. After looking at a few CVs, you will get to know that many people just applied, they do not meet the criteria, or somehow you do not uh, feel that they are fit for those jobs. So you have shortlisted 120 people. You've called these people for, let's say, some kind of test, and you've said that anybody who's going to score above 90 in that test will be shortlisted. And we are supposing that 70 people got more than 90 marks. So you have shortlisted them. So these 70 were called for the interview. And in the interview, only 35 of them did the best. And then after the reference check or something, you eventually select 20 people for the 20 vacant position. So this is your selection function. Then we can go to this orientation function, which is done for new employees. Now, no matter how experienced or how uh, expert people you have selected in your selection process, when they'll be your new employees, they are going to face some kind of uh, initial problems. They might not be familiar with many things. So what you do, you give them the planned education. What, what is orientation? It is a planned education that you give to your new employees to make them familiar with the people and system of your organization. And then what they do in orientation, usually there's a speech from the CEO if there's a batch hiring or HR functions, and you might also take them to a visit of your uh, place. But the idea is that they should be familiar with how things happen in your organization. So this is done for the new employees. Then there's a function of training which is done for the new employees as well as your incumbents, which means employees who are already working in your organization, they also get trained and the new employees also get trained. Now, what is your objective of training? The main objective of the training is that you try and give your new employees and the incumbents the skills 
that they are in need of to perform their current jobs. Now, this is the important thing. For their current jobs, if they're lacking any skills, you give them those skills so they can perform their jobs easily. Then we have this function of performance management. Now, you've hired them, you've given them this orientation, you have trained them. Why did you hire them? You hired them because they should perform for you. So in simple words, performance appraisal has these three things. First, you set the targets. For example, you ask that employee that you need to make 18 products per day. Now, this is the target that you've set for your new employee. So setting target is an important function. Then after a few days or a month or generally annually or biannually, you appraise their performance, which means you see the set targets are being met or they're not being met. So let's suppose if somebody is making 16 products per day and not 18 products per day, which was the set target. So you actually appraise, you evaluate how they are performing. Then based on the appraisal at the end of the year or at the end of some term, you give them the feedback and you also plan for the future. Maybe your targets were not set right, so you, you may uh, reset them. Maybe there was some lacking in training, you do that. So these are the three things that you need to do in performance appraisal management. Then we have another function which is known as the compensation and benefits. Everything that an employee gets for his services, time, energy, skills and value addition will be known as compensation and benefit. Let's say you're giving them this base pay, you're giving them some kind of commissions, overtime and other incomes, bonuses and other benefits like stock options, like cars, like fuel, like free phones, free meals, all those are known as compensation. And if you combine comp compensation with good benefits, it's a very good formula to retain your employees. The next function is the career development. What is career? Career is the sequential positions that you hold during your lifetime. So you start as an assistant manager, then you reach to a deputy manager, area sales, senior manager, general manager, and vice president, and maybe as a president. So these are actually the career steps that you take during your lifetime. So these were a few functions and their basic concepts relate to HRM. Now let's just go to our first function of HRP. And if we look at this file, we will also do it in Excel file. You can always download it from the description link. Uh, this is the actual sheet that we've created. And if you can see this sheet, the first thing that you need to understand is, uh, this is the supply box. So we are talking about the supply of the employees here. Demand, the gap, our findings, and then the decision that we have to take based on our data. This is uh, rather a simple analysis. You can always do it on any number of uh, people in any kind of organization. So let's suppose we have these four uh, levels, top management, middle management, lower management, and non-managerial employees. Supply of these people, which means currently you have four departments, these four departments, and these four levels in all departments. So this is a data of the HR department. In the top management, in HR department, there are 12 people right now. Middle 125, 122, and non-managerial employees are 200. Let's suppose in the marketing department, you have 16, 110, 154, and 564. So this is our actually supply side. These are the number of people that we have. This is the demand side. The number of people that we will be requiring in the coming time, whichever uh, that time is. So based on the data of these things or these number of uh, employees, this is the gap that we are expecting for which we need to plan. So you can see that there are minus signs, there are plus signs, and based on which your findings are these, that 
at these two places you are expecting surplus and at these places you are expecting shortage and then surplus surplus and shortages so you can always have this formula and you can change these numbers to see if these things are changing or not then based on this thing we have to take the decision now which is this decision so in the top management level of hr you need to recruit you need to recruit here but you need to recruit here you need to do the recruitment here you need to do the recruitments in all these four areas and you also need to do recruitment in these three areas but we are also expecting recruitment in these four areas so this is how you actually plan for your future hr based on different departments this sheet can also be converted into number of other departments and number of other uh, skills and uh, levels so you can do this analysis and know that how to decide and what to decide after you have done your human resource planning thank you very much for now